Okay, in this problem, we'll look at a potential with two Dirac delta wells that are symmetrically displaced from the origin. And we can use what we've learned in the past to make our lives easier when solving this problem. So one thing we'll need is obviously our new boundary condition for when we're dealing with delta wells, which is that the wave function is discontinuous across the well. Another thing that we can use for this problem is that because our potential is symmetric, we can look for either even or odd solutions. And so we can break our problem down into you know, two simpler problems, um, and that'll just uh, make the math a little bit easier for us. So uh, from there, we can just continue as usual. So we'll have three regions that we want to solve our eigenvector equation. So uh, one is to the left of both wells, one's to the right of both wells, and one is in between. And outside of each well, the potential is just zero. So in each region, our eigenvector equation will just become this. And again, we're looking for bound states. So we want the energy to be less than the energy of the top of the well. So we want E to be less than zero. And that means we can rewrite our equation like this. And this fixes the form of our solutions to either be the hyperbolic cosine and sine functions or the exponential, uh, exponentially growing and decaying functions. And clearly from the boundary condition that our wave function, we want it to vanish at infinity. Uh, phi 1 should go as this exponential, and phi 3 should go as this one. And then for phi 2, we do the kind of similar kind of thing that we did for the finite square wells. We want to either look for even or odd solutions. So cosh is even uh, across 0, so uh, we would think to pick that function. And I've written Cauch in terms of these exponential things because it turns out just to be easier to solve a problem in that way. So, uh, you know, we'll solve this problem and then you would have to go back and then instead of choosing Cauch as your solution, you'd have to choose hyperbolic sine. So that would be, you know, e to the kx minus e to the minus kx. Uh, so from here, we'll just need the derivatives of each of these things so we can apply our boundary conditions. And then we'll just start uh, doing that. So our first boundary condition is that the wave function should be continuous across our wells. So phi one at d minus d over two should equal phi two of minus d over two. And this will just relate a to b. And we'll get another, when you do the, uh, the other boundary condition that the wave function should be continuous across this well, you will just get the same kind of equation. It'll just tell you that um, it'll be the same equation only with C instead of A. So that'll just tell us that A is equal to C, which we probably could have guessed. That's kind of what happened last time. Uh, the more interesting boundary condition is the discontinuity on the derivative of the wave function. And as it turns out, you can either apply that condition to this well or to this well, and you'll end up with the same equation. So it doesn't matter which one you do, so I'll just do it for the left well. So uh, from last time, we derived our discontinuity condition uh, on the derivative. So we have this. And using these things, we can plug everything in, and that will turn into this equation which looks kind of nasty, but all you want to do is plug in. Uh, so we have an A here, so you want to plug in for, uh, you know, we have A in terms of B right here, so just plug that in. And then the equation will become this. And then after a little bit of math to simplify things, you will get to this equation. And so this is our equation for our eigenenergies. So it's another uh, transcendental equation, just like we found for the finite square well. So you'd have to solve this either numerically or graphically to get the eigenvalues. And after that, the problem is pretty much solved. You have, um, you've reduced, you found the eigenenergies in principle, and then you have one coefficient left over, which is B, which is determined from the normalization. Uh, then you would have to go back and solve this problem again using you know, doing the odd solution. And if you did that, everything would work out almost the same, only you would get for the transcendental equation, uh, this equation. So it's 
almost the same. It's, it's just a minus here instead of a plus. So the, this equation determines the eigenvalues for the even solutions, and this equation determines the solutions for the odd, it determines the eigenenergies for the odd solutions. And I've plotted them so we can look at them. So the even one, um, if you, so I've, here's, uh, you know, the left side of the equation is always just k, which goes to square root of v, or absolute, square root of absolute value v, and then this is the right-hand side. Oh. So uh, this thing. And as you can see, so we're looking for the left because the energy is a negative. So we want to look for intersections of these two functions on this side. And you can see there is one here. And then these functions kind of diverge. So there aren't any more intersections. So what that's telling us is that there is one eigenvalue. So there's one solution to this equation and hence one bound state. So we have one even solution to our problem. And as I change A or uh, D, so A is the strength of the well, it's alpha, and then D is just the distance between the wells. It kind of uh, changes where the intersection happens, but there's always one and only one intersection. If we look at our other equation, uh, unfortunately they're both in red, but whatever, uh, you can also see that there is one intersection, so we have one odd solution as well. So there's one even solution and one odd solution, so there's a total of two bound states. But this solution, my odd solution, if I make d really, really small, um, I guess I have to make it really, really small, then you can see that there isn't an intersection anymore. So there, that my solution disappears if d becomes too small. And this actually makes a lot of sense because we, um, we know that for a single Dirac delta well that we have one bound state. So, and that's what we found last time. And we would think that, well, if we have two delta wells, there should be two states if they're really far away from each other because they're just two, two wells. So there should be one state in each well. And um, that logic makes sense. But if we make the wells really close together, in fact, if we make them right on top of each other, then they kind of overlap. So there becomes only one uh, delta well. So we would expect there to only be one solution. So what that means is there must be some intermediate value. So as you, you know, make D smaller and smaller, one of your solutions must disappear. And that's what we're seeing here. As we make D and D smaller, my odd solution disappears and I only have my even solution. So there's only one bound state. So another thing that's commonly asked is how small can D be before our odd solution vanishes? So when do we go from having two bound states to having only one? And we can figure that out by looking at our, um, our graphical solution for our uh, odd transcendental equation. And you can notice that as I make d smaller, the intersection point becomes uh, closer and closer to zero. So this, you know, this is the absolute value of the energy, or this is negative of the, well, the, the, the energy is uh, becoming less and less negative is the point. And obviously, um, if I'm, my energy becomes can only become so small before there's not any bound state left. My energy has to be greater than zero, basically. And so as I make D less and less, the energy of that bound state is becoming less and less. So it becomes clear that my odd state will disappear when the energy becomes too small. So what we can do is look at our transcendental equation when the energy is very small and say, what is the value of d when that happens. So all we have to do is tailor expand this equation, this function really here, uh, for small e, which since k goes as the square root of e, if e is small, then k is going to be small. So I just want to tailor expand this exponential to order k, which is just 1 minus kd. So my equation will become this, and then this, these ones will cancel. And I will just have this equation. And I have a k on both sides, so those both go away. And this just tells me what my value of d is when uh, k is very small. 
So this is the value that uh, d has to be. So at once you uh, the wells become this distance apart, my second my odd bound state disappears. So d has to be greater than this value for a second bound state to exist.